Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve kth smallest element in a BST, lead code number 230. So we're given the root of a binary search tree and an integer k. Now we need to return the kth smallest value, one indexed, of all the values of the nodes in the tree. So that's actually pretty straightforward here. If you have a binary tree here, it's actually a binary search tree. So we have the middle value is three. That means that everything to the left should be less than three and everything to the right should be greater than three. And that rule is recursive. So at the one here, everything to the right should be bigger. It is. And everything to the left should be smaller. It's none. So that's fine. So it's a valid BST and we are guaranteed that it's a valid BST. And we just need to return the kth smallest element. Well, one, two, three, and four is the order. If k is equal to one, that means the very smallest element, which is just the one. If we go down here, we're going to see a different binary search tree. If k is equal to three, we want the third smallest element and that is going to be three. So we just return that node's value. Okay, so we are going to do this with k is equal to six. Well, if we were to take all these numbers out of the tree and sort them, you would have this order. So we'll have one, then three, then four, five, six, seven, and nine. Okay, if we want the sixth smallest element in one indexed, so that means one, two, three, four, five, six, the kth smallest element or the sixth smallest element would be seven. Okay, you could do that. And via a traditional DFS here, you could generate generate all these numbers, put them in an array. And if you were to sort that array, then that would take n log n time. However, if you know your theory, then you would know that actually you could generate this in big O of n time. And you don't even really need to use the array because you can just visit this via a DFS and particularly you would do an in-order traversal. So what is an in-order traversal? Well, it basically means that for any node here, you would consider the left subtree before yourself and then you'd process process yourself, the current node, and then you would do what's on the right subtree. If we looked at this five here, well, first he's got to do his left. So he's going to go over here. Okay. The same rule applies. This three has got to do its left first. So he's going to go over here. Okay. Same rule actually applies for even this one here. And so we process the left. There's nothing there. So that is done pretty quickly. Now we're ready to process this current node. Notice that the first node we're actually processing is the smallest value. Why is that true? Well, this is a binary search tree. Well, it means that if you go all the way to the left, you're going to get your smallest value that's forced via the BST property. So what's great about this in order traversal is we actually visit the nodes in order if it's a BST. That's basically what it means. So if we process this node here, okay, great. We've seen basically the first element. And for now, we'll build up this array. And then we'll just return back over here. Okay, so this three saw its left as one. And now it's ready to process itself. Okay, so itself is three. Notice the second thing we processed is the second smallest element. Okay, so the three has been processed. He'll go to his right side now. We're at a four. He does its left. That's nothing. Then he processes itself. So that's going to have four. And then he processes right. That's nothing. We return back over here. We return back over here. Okay. The five has already done its left. So now it's ready to do itself. Notice that is the fourth element that is biggest in the list. So we see the value of five and we are then going to go to the right side. Okay. Same thing with the seven here. We have to process the left stuff first. So it processes the left. Same thing with the six, except that's nothing. The next thing we process is the six. Then the six can do this right side, which is nothing. He returns back over here and now it's ready to process the seven. So we do that. That is our answer. One, two, three, four, five, six, many things. So we can actually return that seven here. So now that you get the idea, let's do it without building up this array because it's actually not necessary at all. So the idea is basically just to decrement K every time you process a node in order. So we'll again start at the five here, left and then left. We are going to quickly process that and see that we process the one. Is K equal to one? If K was equal to one, well, that'd be the smallest element. No, it's not. Then what we're going to do instead is decrement K, basically getting it closer to the element we're looking for. Now we're going to go up here and we'll say, okay, it's time to process three. Is K equal to one? No, it's not. We are going to decrement it and keep this going. We go to the right here. We'll see the four. No, it's still not equal to one. So this goes down to three. We're going to go back up here and then at the five,
5. That still doesn't work because K then goes down to 2. Okay, go to the right. Then first we go to the left. Okay, it's still not this number here because K is 2. We bring that down to 1. And then when we return back over here, we see that K is 1, meaning that the current element we're on here, that is actually the one we ultimately want to return. So let's code this up. It is going to have a time complexity of big O of N because you could actually go through all of the elements in the tree. If it was kind of all slanted to the left like this, you'd visit everything. And because of the recursive call stack, that also will have a space complexity of big O of H, where H is the height of the tree, or more generally just O of N. Okay, so the idea is to get our count, which we were actually just calling K before. It's what we're going to decrement. And that's going to start at K, but it's actually going to be a list of just K. That's basically just to force this to act as a global variable. And we'll set answer to be just the list of zero, basically initializing it as a dummy value. And for the same reason, we are making it a global variable. Okay, then we'll make a helper function, which we'll define as DFS, which takes a node. This is going to do an in-order traversal. So if we don't have a node, aka it's null, then we just want to return. There's nothing to do here. Otherwise, it's an in-order traversal. So the first thing we want to do is left. We want to DFS on the node dot left. Now it's going to force it to go all the way to the left to start at that smallest value. Uh, but then after we're back from this left call here, we are ready to process ourselves. Now to process ourselves, we want to say if the count, aka the count at zero, if that is equal to one, well, then we've actually found the value of interest here. And so we want to set answer at zero equal to our nodes value. If we didn't find that, then okay, that's fine. We just want to count at zero is going to decrement. So that is going to equal itself minus one. At this point here, you want to do a DFS on the node dot right. However, you only want to do this in a certain scenario. You only want to do this if the count is actually still bigger than zero. So we'll do a DFS node.write in that case. Why is it bigger than zero? Well, the idea is that if this count here was actually one, so if it got decremented down to one, well, then we've set our value of interest. At that point there, we are decrementing the count and that would actually bring the count to zero. So at this stage, if the count is zero, well, then we don't want to do the DFS. But if it's anything bigger than zero, then we actually have to keep going here. Okay, then we are going to just run this. So we'll do DFS on the original root that we were given. That's going to trace through and set that answer value. And we can ultimately just return our answer at zero. This is going to work in a time complexity of big O of N. And as we said, the space complexity due to the recursive call stack is going to be big O of N or big O of H as well. So if you submit that, that is going to work. And I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.